Meet three guys who do it all when it comes to manufacturing skis. And they've taken a homegrown approach to their work. These three truly make their product by hand. Meet their fearless leader, John Howe. Howe may look at home on his tractor, but this ski engineer began his career at Head Skis, where he worked with legends like Jean-Claude Kili. In the 70s, Howe revolutionized tennis with the oversized Prince tennis racket. And in the 80s, he worked for Atomic and designed skis for Swiss great Andreas Schiffer. And if that wasn't enough, he also wrote the definitive ski racing book, The Mechanics of Skiing. But now, Howe is designing a new product, a ski he calls the Claw. I felt that the damping system had not been completely worked out. So I started working on a, a better way to damp, dampen skis, and that became the Claw. And uh, this has been about five years ago. We have three times more damping than any other ski. And uh, it really works. And watching people come off the hill and being able to ski in the ice for the first time, that makes it worthwhile. How was hooked on the new ski? and decided to triple the size of his company. Chris, I'm going to show you the difference between a ski with vibration damping and one with none. Okay. Watch the tip on this ski. You'll notice it takes quite a, quite a few oscillations before it stops vibrating. There's the claw. And when these guys are done bouncing skis off the floor, they like to get out on the hill and really show off the product. You like the sensation of gravity and G-forces. This is the ski for you. you. You bend it, lay into it, and uh, you get the feeling of a fighter jet pilot at times. You get this uncontrolled giggle, giggle going on down the hill. Get to the bottom and uh, people look at you like, man, what's wrong with this guy? He's insane. And uh, it gives you that sensation. It's a thrill. A regular ski takes about 20 cycles to, to die down if we clamp it in the middle and twang it like a diving board. A regular ski takes about 20 cycles. Uh, the, all the other schemes in the market, we measured them all, the Derby Flex and the Piezo Electric and the, the, the Pro Links and you name it. They, you might get down to 15 or 16 cycles to quiet the ski down. A claw is a six or a seven. I mean, it just is in a different ballpark because we have so much uh, of the beam of the ski above the rubber, and it's just not a plate sitting on top of an existing ski. It's like having a suspension down in the car rather than just putting a, a spongy seat on top of a tractor and calling that a suspension system. How did two brothers make the jump from selling skis to building skis? We've got a couple of locations through our ski shop, our retail ski shop, and. Uh, at one of them, uh, I hooked up with the director of ski school there, and he mentioned that he had a, a friend who made skis in his barn, and he'd like to come over and meet me. And one day he walked through the door with a couple of pairs of skis in his hand, says, uh, Hi, I'm John Howe. Take this pair of skis, slap some binders on it, ski it like you stole it, tell me the truth, whether you like it or not, put the other one in the rack. If you sell it, give me a couple hundred bucks. If you don't, I'll pick it back up. And uh, next thing I know, we're out training gates on the hill a day a week and riding up the lift one day. And I happen to be a jack of all, master of none. He says, what are you going to do for the summer? And I said, well, either I'll be a carpenter or I can go back to the paper mill. And he uh, gave me the offer of uh, working with him at his house, making skis in his barn. And as soon as I collected my jaw from the, from the snow below the chair, I said, oh, gee, that sounds good. And next thing I knew, I was traveling to Waterford and and uh, learning how to make skis with, with Mr. Hall. When the snow melts, the real work begins at one of the world's smallest ski factories. This is where it all starts, right here in the barn. And this is the main wood, good solid pine, and it's light, inexpensive, and uh, really strong wood. If it all fell apart tomorrow, we've, go we've gone places nobody goes. Uh, John told me after I made my first ski, you know, you're one of a handful of people in the world that know how to do this. That's a big charge for me. That's worth a million bucks in my pocket. It's been quite an ego trip. <laughs> to, be, to be skiing around on the mountain and seeing people on skis that you actually crafted is, is quite a thrill. And when the work ends in the basement, the fun begins again for one of the world's smallest ski companies. If you're in the ski business to make money, you're in the wrong business. We do it because we love it hooking up the magic turn. 
it's a passion for the sport. And John's opened a lot of doors that we never would have even got our foot into. Days like this make it all worthwhile. <laughs>